You know, we've been looking at the critters on this pond, various types, including the six-spotted fishing spider, but uh, we've been looking on the surface of the pond. Today, I'm gonna to take you under the water and see what goes on in the water that's under the pond. Right now, it's the end of April. We'll be approaching May here shortly, and it's about 50, 55 degrees today. Uh, they're talking about potential snow, four to six inches maybe. Uh, we'll see how that works out in the next couple days. But uh, now the pond's kind of quiet. But uh, we'll be taking a look under the water what's there. And then we'll be taking a look at some more of the particular design of the six-spotted fishing spider, which makes it very unique indeed. One example of an ecosystem is a pond. Now a pond may have organisms such as dragonflies and other insects, frogs, fish, and plants. And the ecosystem will also have non-living factors such as water, rocks, and the dirt that make up the bottom of the pond. You recall the first visitors to this vernal pond were the snakes. There's the water snake and the ribbon snake. There's the hognose snake and a few others that make up the population of snakes around the vernal pond. And of course, where you find these snakes, you will also find what they come here for, and that'll be the frogs. And frogs are in abundance in this vernal pond. You hear the frog in the background, and here's what maybe is a little spring peeper. Bitsy bitsy guy. See if we can get a little closer look without the little frog heading off, jumping off. Yeah, he's laying kind of still. Oh, there he goes. He's just a young guy. He's got a little tail going on there yet. They're just all over the place here next to the pond. Sometimes they hide out and camp out in the mud. Sometimes they see me come and hop off into the pond itself. Lots of them, lots of them. The green frog is the largest of the frog species found on this pond. Only thing bigger than that is going to be the big daddy. But before we get to him, let's start with the smaller species and work our way up. What you're looking at here is a a baby tree frog. Almost looks like a real ripe olive. Brilliant lime green, looks shiny. Two little black eyes. Cute little guy. There's another one here on this little tree. See if I can locate him. The first to come out of the woods and mate on the pond is the wood frog, which sounds like a duck. And the western chorus frog makes his sounds by stretching out the skin on his neck. And finally, it's the big daddy, the bullfrog of the pond. Not hard to recognize this one, but the sound of his croak. A variety of species of dragonfly and damselflies will populate this pond throughout the summer months. And they come in a variety of colors, from reds to blues to yellows to oranges, and all colors in between. Other flying insects, such as the caddyfly and the alderfly, uh, will also be here at the pond. 
and their larva is a good part of food source within the water itself. The beauty of these flying insects is something to behold. They are a welcome inhabitant of the ecosystem of this pond. The damselflies come in a variety of colors as well and different look to them, such as this brilliant one in blue. The painted turtles and the snapping turtles also occupy the pond. And as I told you, let's take a little trip with the turtles and see what it's like looking under the water as they might see it. Some areas of the pond can be silty or made up of algae material that cloud the water some. The same material is food though to the other animals such as the tiny tadpoles and some of the other microscopic animals that we can't see with the naked eye. The bottom of the pond can be made up of debris of decaying leaves or other wood particles that fall into the water such as even branches from a tree. Aquatic beetles of various kinds can be seen swimming through the water and also you can see the tadpoles in various stages of growth. They sometimes look like small fish. This water boatman aquatic beetle almost looks like a bird flying through the sky. The green grasses that grow from the silt on the bottom of the pond up through the surface of the pond and then beyond provide places for dragonflies, damselflies, and other such insects to rest upon or to lay their eggs on. It also is a place the fishing spider enjoys being around. In clearer and shallower water, the leaves that have been left in the water since fall still have some color to them and make for a nice view. Until these leaves will break down into debris for the bottom of the pond, they make good hiding place for the tadpoles that are growing, small frogs, leeches, and other aquatic animals. So even though the surface of the pond provides much more to view, there's certainly a lot of life below and under the waters as well. Returning to the surface of the water, we have our star, the six-spotted fishing spider. Let's follow them around and do some learning concerning some of the other features of this spider. Unlike the dark fishing spider with more massive legs, the six-spotted fishing spider's legs are longer and thinner, allowing them to easily rest upon the surface of the water and navigate around it quickly. And they are also at home under the water as they're excellent swimmers and can capture prey underwater and stay there for up to 30 some minutes. Their speed and agility allows them to either dive under the water 
or leap out of the water to avoid being taken by a predator. Here's a good view that shows the elongated legs on the six-spotted fishing spider. And camouflage, as seen here, is one of its best defenses against predators. And when mature, second year, male fishing spiders are not out fishing, then they're on the prowl in search of a female to mate with. In episode 11, we'll explore the mating behaviors of this six-spotted fishing spider. The life in this pond is found above the surface of the water and below the surface of the water. It's a living pond. 